We are live. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to, I'm going to call it the Tay and Joe show. It's really That's what it is for right now. today. <laughs> right now. <laughs> and it may change along the way. And if anybody doesn't know already, I am Dr. Tay. Also, well, my real name is Dr. Latasia Jones. And with me, I have my amazing collaborator, Mr. Joseph Ward, who okay. is, if you don't know him already, let me make sure I make sure you know him a few different ways. He's an author. Okay. He's a host of an amazing podcast, the Freedom Network podcast, if you see in his little name tag. And he's an educator in a lot of different ways, whether it comes to health, black history, and so on. So I am amazed to be here with him. Hey. So I, I appreciate that. And uh, that intro sound great. I'm going to go find that guy in a little bit, but that intro is great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she... She trying to get me back because the way I introduced her in the last series. So guess what? Oh, okay. Guess what? I like it. So do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. So I appreciate Joseph Ward for being here again. I have once again dragged him into some trouble, y'all. So you are here because you want to tune into the Black Love series and Ode to Valentine's Day, in which we have decided to bring you not one, not even two and not even three. We're bringing you four black couples yeah. who are successful in their careers and they just happen to be in love too. And right. they're going to teach us so many things, so many things. Thank you. Thank that you. Guys. Real love. Like, it's going to help me. <laughs> so, <laughs> that real love and that real successful love. Mm -hmm. So today we have with us the Lauries. Hey, hey. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, so we're going to dive right into this. Mr. and Mrs. Laurie, can you give us a brief introduction of who you are as an individual? We'll start there. Who you are as yourself? Yes, so I'm Aisha Laurie, one half of this duo. Um, I am an electrical engineer by training, um, worked in industry for a while, and then I decided that because there aren't many women and minorities who are in this space that I really wanted to focus because everywhere I went, I was usually the only one, the only woman, the only minority. And I decided that, you know what, I really want to focus on this because this is my real passion. And so I told my husband, um, my boyfriend at the time, like, I'm just, I think I'm just going to leave my job. <laughs> And he was like, so that means you're going to have to leave that shoe collection. <laughs> so I had to think long and hard about that because I would have really been cutting my salary in half, which really affected. I mean, at the time, it was the two of us. So, you know, it was like, if we're going to take the risk, we should do it now. Mm -hmm. And so I made the leap into the university space, nonprofits, wanted to focus on that. And that really has been my passion, just really trying to bring more career awareness to engineering for women and for minorities. Um, currently, right now, I'm the senior director at NACME, which is the National Action Council for Minorities in Engineering, where I get to just do just that, help women and minorities who are pursuing engineering and computer science and then working with companies to have them understand how to best support them not only financially through scholarships, but also with professional development. So yes. I've been doing that for almost 15 years now, and I love it. The ability to really be able to incorporate my passion and my love also with a lot of my volunteer opportunities has right. really been a huge help for me. That's amazing. Absolutely. And that's me in a nutshell. But that's amazing because you're amazing by yourself. So let's let's talk to... Mr. Laurie, give us, let us yes. know you are amazing by yourself. <laughs> As you see, she practices that a lot. <laughs> I'm not as fortunate, you know. Um, I'm not in anybody's space to give my 30 second elevator pitch of myself frequently. What did I tell you, Tay? Didn't I tell you? But um, <laughs> we love it. <laughs> we love it, definitely. I, I am a Dakar Lari and I am a um, IT project manager. Um, right now I deal with uh, mostly projects in the cybersecurity space. Um, I've been uh, in IT for over 20 years now and that sounds weird saying that. Um, <laughs> worked myself up from a, a little grunt guy 
at a help desk to managing 50, 60 people to, I said I wanted to take a break and now I'm doing IT uh, project management. That's if you want to call out a break. But um, <laughs> so I've been doing that for about um, five years now. Um, prior to that, I just did more um, network engineering, um, infrastructure design and things like that. So um, weaseled my way into computers. I, I really is not where I started, um, but every road has different paths. It has different endings and uh, a whole lot of entryways and off ramps. So I found myself on and off um, for a long time to just get get where I wanted to be um, and, and be good where I'm at. So that's me in a nutshell. Uh, not as exciting, but you know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> always, always does that. I'm like, would hey. you stop? I look, I'm, I'm just a computer guy to everybody. Hey, look, Even the kids it, refer to him as the IT guy. Look, <laughs> I know you in port. Trust me. Like when I go when I go to work every day and I see the, the guys who do IT at my job and they've been working since six and everybody else started nine, you are very important. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. <laughs> right. I, so, I'll pass that along to my team because I'm the guy that comes in at nine o'clock too. I'm not. Going to <laughs> <right>. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, how did you guys meet? Like, tell us that story. How did the spark happen from the beginning? Who, whose story you want? <laughs> I knew you. Were Let's give both first. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were gonna say that. Good. Let's, get, let's get both first. <laughs> yeah. Woo, well, this is a story. I'll try to give you the um, quick version. We actually met at a, um, a summer program that we both taught at. It was a program that we both were in when we were in high school, a pre, um, like, uh, pre-college program that really, you know, really focused on students to help them with science, math, and technology and all of that stuff. Um, we both grew up in the urban area in North New Jersey, which is where we're from. Um, and so going through the program, we went through it at like different times. Sister Carr is a little older than me. <laughs> so once you graduate from the program, you're supposed to get a, a like a scholarship. They give you some money to help you go to college. And when it got time for me to graduate, there weren't as much funds left. Mm. So the program director told me that, you know, my freshman year, I could come back and actually work and teach. Um, and so he said, if you don't have a job, definitely come back because you, you weren't allowed to come back and teach until your junior year of college. Right. And so I came back after my freshman year and started teaching. And my very first day, I'm trying to find my way because we had, they had changed buildings. And I see this guy in the parking lot and he looks so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost afraid to talk to him, but I was like going to be late if I didn't figure out where I needed to go. So I asked him, I was like, oh, excuse me, can you tell me where this building is? And he looked at me and was like, oh, you go over there. And I, I walked away like, that guy is so mean. <laughs> That's from my interaction. He just looked mean. And I was She's like- She's not talking about me, by the way. <laughs> It was some other guy. So <laughs> I went into the main auditorium where everyone is, and I see him in there. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the same guy who was in the park. <laughs> so they introduced all of the counselors. And um, I mean, as the time went on uh, for the summer, we got to know each other. We were both teaching assistants. And we just really spent a lot of time together, just going back and forth into the office. We taught um, middle and high school students uh, math, science, and worked on projects with them for the summer. And that's how we really got to know each other. And I got to know, I was like, man, this guy is not as mean. He was like really silly. And um, I was like- Still some other guy. I was like, okay, he's, um, and I, I love to laugh. And if somebody makes me laugh, that's 
like kind of it. So I get that. But I noticed I was like, he's really silly, but I don't really think that he's like into me though. And um, just as time went on, his friends, he asked me to go out one day. And that was our first date. That's what's up. You have another version? <laughs> oh. You don't have to do it. For, for today. The funny <laughs> part about that story is um, when we started going out, he did not know how old I was. Okay. Because I already was, I was already a year ahead. So I was 18. Right. And you had to be a junior to be a teaching assistant. Right. So he just assumed that I was the same age as him. And year, like, I don't know what it was, years later. Years later. <laughs> he said, never, I never, never knew how old you were. <laughs> never knew how old you were. Oh my goodness. So I took that as a compliment. Like, I, I, I uh, actually must have. Carried myself very well. If obviously, and I did thought not, of all the places we've been that we could be in jail right now. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that I was eighteen. Right. Luckily, <laughs> it wasn't that big of a gap where it would be a problem. Right. <clears throat> but still. Anyway. I get you. I'm, I'm a black man in America. I get you. <laughs> oh yeah. lord. So that's how we met. We started going out. Um, and then he had a really bad car accident. Um, we were going out in the summer, then we went back to college. We were only 30 minutes apart and where we went to school. Um, and he got in a really bad car accident in November. And one of his friends called me and said, your boy got in an accident. And I was like, first of all, like, who is this? <laughs> And he was like, he's in, he is in a really bad accident. He's in the hospital. And um, I remember talking to my mom, like, you know, the guy I went out with a couple of times, he was in a really bad accident. One of his friends called him. I want to go see him. My mother was very leery. She was like, you don't know how many girls may be up at this hospital. <laughs> so um, I don't think you should go. <laughs> think you should go because we have only been out a couple times maybe like three three times maybe and um coincidentally i had actually got into an accident right before <laughs> i went to see him i got hit by a car oh man oh my goodness so i went to actually see him and um i had a cast on and had crutches so I came in to see him and he was in some contraption. I didn't even know, like he had pins in his hip and his leg was up oh, wow. on him. He was in, a, so when I came in to see him, he was like, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, it was just crazy. That was a crazy time. So that's how your love story started. That's that's an interesting story. It is it's a good story. <laughs> it's a good story. <laughs> but then we took, a break. we took a break mm -hmm. because, you know, since he was in an accident, he was with someone prior to me. And because he was in an accident, you know, <laughs> the truth comes said, out. You know, his ex girlfriend wanted to try to give it a chance. I think she's like, oh my God, he died. Maybe I love him. <laughs> and you know, so we went our separate ways. Back to hmm. the <laughs> <laughs> we went our separate ways for like a year, and then out of the blue, he called me and just tried to act like you know he didn't still like be like I was just calling to see how he was doing. I was <laughs> a whole year later. Well, that's how they do though. Look. <laughs> Oh, I'm a now. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when it worked. It worked. Okay. Okay. Right. So it worked. Him calling worked. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. And then it was it was nice. It was fun. And he would come to campus and um like take me to work. And I was like, this is a really nice guy. Okay. Aww. Do you want to change the story of any any type of way, Dakar? Anything you would like it, to add? It, would, it wouldn't matter at this point. It wouldn't matter. 
I, I don't control the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I know that Dr. Tay, <laughs> so Joe is Aisha here. Joe is here. Are the besties is of that friends. That's why Joe is here. Joe don't have no balance. Does we <laughs> know what professional control is? See, <laughs> see, <laughs> hey, look, see, see, she dragging me in this. I got drug in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the that is the story. The story. The story so yeah. so so how long have y'all so now you're married? Yes. So how long have you been married? Or I know some people give it a, a two-part um answer where they'll be like, well, we were together for this long and we're married for this long. So however you want to answer that. How long have we been married? How long have we been married? Married would be 20 years in July. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations, yes. Yes. Definitely not as easy. Marriage is hard. How many well, times have I died in the last 20 years? <laughs> Boy, you ain't died. <laughs> but this gives hope to somebody because I know every year when the holidays goes by, there's exes that text or call and, and they say, hey, how you doing? Like we've been <laughs> throughout the rest of the year, but we have it. So this yes. gives hope to those who are use that method, right? You never know what happens 20 years later. Just, you know, that's you very know. true. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and I, I, I was actually surprised when he was ready, but he says that it's really my fault. Because we moved in together, like as soon as I graduated, <laughs> I moved in with him. And um, you might want to edit this part, but I didn't tell my parents. <laughs> I was not trying to go back home. So my parents came to graduation and had already moved. And my dad was like, where's your stuff? Oh, I was man. like, oh, um, so Dakar and I live together. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad was not happy. Right. And mind you, he's legally allowed to carry a gun. He's the police officer. And uh, I didn't tell the car that I did uh, my <laughs> So he was also blindsided. Like, I feel you, I feel you my friend. brother. <laughs> I feel you, my brother. It was good that he liked me. Right. right. And, and and I went to the range with him a couple of times, so you know. Yeah, you got it. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. All right, let me let me let you know who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's cool. So That's I didn't cool. think that he was ready, but he says I kind of already gave him an ultimatum. I just I've seen many of his friends who had girlfriends that you know I talked to and I've been around, and they've been girlfriends for a number of years, and. Right. I just was like, uh, I'm not trying to be the girlfriend forever. I get that. Completely <laughs> understand that. But so so this is my question. So while you were developing, you said y'all moved together before you graduated. This is with your bachelor's or what? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So you were still developing along the way, both of you, when it, yep. when it comes to your careers and when it comes to being individuals. So how did you balance still figuring out who you are as yourself and being in this relationship with, and not even just a regular relationship, because I think there's different levels of relationships, right? You both are in STEM careers, ultimately. Right. And that's some of those most challenging careers. So how did you balance, you know, doing your own challenging thing for yourself, but being together at the same time and having that relationship? Um, well, it, it was tough. Um, like she said, when we moved in together, it was still, a lot of little things going on. Um, one, at the time, I was working in New York. No, I wasn't working in New York mm -hmm. when we first moved. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I had a, oh yeah, I was working at home. But, um, I had like a 45 minute commute every day. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was also still in school. Because of my accident, it sidetracked me for a couple of years. And um, I went back to school a couple of years later. So I was working my way through school, being, I always say, um, being blessed enough to be a young black man with no kids and making a lot of money at the time. 
Mm -hmm. um, early 20s, making more than my mother did at her peak at, at by the time I was, you know, in working age, it was kind of crazy. So, you know, um, coming from where we came from, it was like me being a hood superstar without yeah. having to do the hood things. Right. Right. You know, I'm driving the same car that they drive it in. I'm, <laughs> you know, flexing the same jewels that they flexing in the same clothes and everything, but I'm doing a nine to five every day and it's, right. it's cool. You know, I don't have to look over my shoulder. I made it out, you right. know. Right. Um, but even still with that, it was like I said, I was working my way through school, um, working 40 hours a day, dealing with um, corporate America, um, even even coming in at a low level, you still have to deal with that to a degree. And um, and then turn around, her first job sent her to, where'd you go first? I went to Chicago first. She, as soon as she graduated, three months later, she's in Chicago. So I'm home, single, but not single. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <okay. laughs> like, I got a whole lot of time on my hands and nobody to do anything with. So, you know, it was a lot of time in the park playing ball and a lot of extra time to study. All right. But um it was it was it was kind of crazy. It was but you don't realize the roller coaster you on when you on it, so to speak. After a while, the twists and turns, you become more, um, I don't know, you, you get used to it. So you don't realize how much you're being thrown here and there and so forth. So, you know, even though, like, we went from seeing each other, talking to each other a couple of times a day to I'm busy, I can't take calls during this time. Um, yeah. All right, I'll call you when I get home. But when she get home, I'm in class, or I'm at the park and don't hear the phone. Or, right. You know, so it's like, all right, I'll call you before I go to bed, and all right, I fell asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, yeah. But, yeah. So, you know, it, it was it was it was crazy. It was crazy yeah, for it was, a while. It was really challenging, especially for me. Um, I went straight from living on campus to now living with my boyfriend yeah. to three months after I moved in, I was off to another state and we weren't living together. Now I'm living in corporate housing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I was young and, and like he said, you know, graduating, it was like I was making good money. I was like, this is great. I wanted to always travel. That's something that I always wanted to do. So I think for me, like this being like my first like grown up relationship, I didn't really understand a lot of the things that went into it. You know, it's like you yeah. like somebody, oh, I love them. You spend a lot of time with them. You talk to them. But um, I think one of my first offers was to go to Atlanta. Right. And I just I accepted the offer. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even talk to him. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> That's a so, long way. <laughs> so I was just so, I don't know. I'm excited because I'm like, oh, I always wanted to leave New Jersey. This is my opportunity. And I'm excited. Yeah. And I tell him, like, I got this offer. I accept it. I'm going to Atlanta. And he was like, you're you not going to talk to me about it? <laughs> and it was when he said it that I was like, oh, I was supposed to talk to him about it. Right. So it's just, it was just things like that. And then, like he said, I didn't take the offer because I'm like, I do love him. And she didn't take the offer because I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, all right, cool. Just like that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but I, I knew how to interpret that. Right. right. right cool was like, you go ahead if you want to. Right. So when he said that, I was like, yeah, that's not all right. And it ain't cool. So yeah, that was cool. Anyway, so I <laughs> find, and I had another offer. So I took this other offer, but not knowing that the other offer was still going to have me just up and trap be traveling. Mm -hmm. So like you said, it was 
was it was difficult because and he worked a different shift. So every time it was time to talk, I'm getting off of work. I want to talk to my boyfriend and he's at work. And then when he gets off work, he wants to talk. It's like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. And I'm like, I got to get up in the morning, go to work. Right. So that was really challenging for us. And then also for me, because, you know, just traveling, I'm trying to figure out who I am. I just went from my parents to now with my mm-hmm. to college to with my boyfriend. And so I'm young. I have money. I can travel. I don't have any kids. This is what I've been waiting for. And I'm still trying to figure out like this dynamic of having this other person in my life who mm-hmm. I love, but it's like, I'm still trying to figure me out at the same time. Right. Right. So a question with that, because a lot of times I'm, I've seen a lot of different videos of different people in, in the relationship space. And you have some people who are in relationships, but they are also chasing careers. And sometimes you you will have a couple split because one person is chasing the career. So what made you to decide that? Yes, even though we're chasing our careers, we still want to build together. Like what made that important to you two? Um, I think for 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 us, I always said that I really didn't have a career. Always had great jobs. Okay. Let me let me reframe that. Great paying job. <laughs> okay. So, um, for me, it was more so she had a career goal. Like she was set. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be an electrical engineer. Then doing a little stuff in college while she's working on her EE. It was oh, I love education. I got to figure out how to marry these two. Right. I figured it out. It doesn't exist, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm like, okay, good. Uh, have fun with that. <laughs> I'm going to be over here going to work. So for me, it, it didn't really, there wasn't much interference because I started out as a, a architect. I got accepted into NJIT as an architect, into the architectural program. Right. Before I got to my first class, I changed my major because I figured out how much architects make and how long it took for that book. <laughs> and I ain't had that type of time. I'm, I'm right. here in the north. <laughs> I need to make money quick. Um, right. Yeah. You're going to have me locked up here for four years, but I can go where I want. Right. I'm happy about that. But I need to figure out how to make these cash flow a little bit faster. So I mm-hmm. said, oh, his name to architect architecture and be within engineering. So, oh, I'm gonna go into the civil engineering program. So, I did a civil engineering program up until my accident. Um, and there was a lot of things going on with my accident and going back to school that made it difficult for me to get back into the program. So, with that, I started working because now I gotta pay for school and um. Again, great paying jobs, and now the jobs are paying for me to go to school too, but I got to do something along the lines of what I'm doing at work. Well, how the hell am I going to do that? Right. Well, you know a lot about computers. We come to you about our computer stuff before we go to the IT department anyway. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. You made me feel good. I'm doing work for nothing. I'm like, doing my job, and I'm doing the IT person's job. Great. Okay. So long story short, um, once I started really looking at what I was doing, I said, what can I do in school and not lose a bunch of credits and all that type of stuff? So I went into um, MIS, Management Information Systems, and I got my undergrad in that and then just started moving in the path that I'm moving. So for us, career wasn't really a, a problem. Yeah, it, it wasn't really a problem. The thing that would bother me is, which I was very grateful for, but he always would downplay like what it is he did and mm-hmm. and that. And I think that, yeah. you know, the fact that his accident derailed him, even once we got married, he was still in school. And some sometimes I would see him frustrated 
And I would try not to like bother him about it. Because at first he was like, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna take classes later. And I would bring it up, not because I was just like, I need you to have a degree, but I wanted to make sure that that was good with him. And so mm-hmm. I went to talk to my dad one day about it. And he was like, he is a black man. <laughs> you need to leave him alone. Yeah. <laughs> if he wants to go back and finish his degree, he's going to do it. And if you have a problem with that, then you need to figure that out within yourself. And I didn't have a problem with it. I just wanted to make sure he was OK, because right. then it's like I went on to graduate school and he's still trying to think about like, do I need to finish school? And he's making good money, but at the same time, it's like, do I have to have a degree to continue doing what I'm doing? So once I had that conversation with my father, I like backed off of him. And I was right. like, when he's ready to go back to school, you know, let him do it and I, I won't bother him. But I think for, like he said, I always, when I had a plan, I, I stuck to that plan and I wanted to do it. It was when I was in industry, I would see women who were in their early 40s, mid 40s. And I would talk to these women because I'm like, I want to be here before you got there. Right. Right. But I noticed that many of them were not married. Many of them had toddlers at like 45. And so I was like, I don't know. So let's talk about that. okay? because that's. You know, that's my number one thing. I'm constantly put on the line because they're like, Tasia, even though I'm still 25. uh, (laughs) I turned 25 too yesterday, girl. Yeah. (laughs) But I'm constantly asked, you know, even though I've done all these things to get where I needed to be, I'm constantly asked, when are you going to settle down and have some kids? And why is it taking so long? And is there, are you not even interested in dating? Like these are the things that come up. So mm-hmm. what it, I don't know if, I mean, you've probably been in the same situations where both of you have worked on yourselves and stayed with each other first and then was like, you know, now, cause if y'all don't mind me bringing up the kids, now you have kids, right? Well, you've had kids for a while. But- yeah, but it wasn't immediate. No. Dakar wanted kids way before I did, okay? <laughs> um, many of his friends um, had gotten married before us. They started having children. And I, I had never really felt that maternal instinct. Okay. I'm the oldest of four girls, so I would take care of my sisters. Okay. Okay. And my whole thing was like, I don't even know if I want to have kids. <laughs> right. But my husband here loves kids. Right. When I tell you, like, he had, even in college, um, a friend of his um, asked him to be a godfather for their twins. And he would bring the twins to college and he's taking care of them. And that was another funny thing. When I met them, I thought those were his kids. And I was <laughs> like, mm, I don't know about this. He's like, they're not my kids. Like, they're my children. They're not my kids. <laughs> and so I'm like, you sure. <laughs> they run around calling me daddy. And right. And I'm like, <laughs> These kids calling you daddy, but you sure they're not your kids. So I never really was like, kid. But he had more than even just those twins. He had a couple other guy kids, and he would have kids sometimes on the weekends. And I came along, like, I want to be the good girlfriend. Okay. And then at some point, like, birthday parties, I'm like, okay. And then, we, and then we get married, and it was at that point, I'm like, do I really want kids? I don't know. Right. So I did, okay, then I go and I talk to my mom. I'm like, mom, I don't know if I, and she was like, if you do not want to have kids, then there's only thing, one thing you could do. And I was like, what is that? She was like, get a divorce. Because she, she said, you know your husband right. loves kids. kids. Right. And, and you knew this from day one. And it's no right. way that you can talk about right now. You don't want to have no kids. So I was trying to like stall as much as possible. So it's like it was fine. It was fine with me. It was fine in the beginning, time. like the first couple years, because right. no, it was, it was like, yeah, I'm going to grad school. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to. And when I was like, yeah, I want to get my PhD. It had been seven years. He was like, nah, I'm not waiting for that. 
I, I just had an age cut off because I can't be the old man at school picking up his his, his two yeah. year old. Yeah. I just, I just couldn't see myself doing that, you know. All right. So, so, I mean, it was it was seven years, but I, I did, like, I had to just come to, like, yes, like, this is your husband, and I already knew what it was he wanted, um, and then we, seven years, we were together before we had the twins, and, and that's why I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, how did you have twins? Did you do it in vitro or any, I said, the Lord, God, it was, yeah, it was the Lord, was. he knew, he was like, this woman? Is doing this one time, but <laughs> once more than one child, and, right. between, and between my mother, like, when am I gonna get some grandkids? So I was like, both of them like teamed up on me. I was like, and this is how these twins came, hey. <laughs> and and that's like how it happens. But I will say that because we started dating so early, like you know, I was nineteen and still trying to figure myself out through those times. Right. And like you said, you know, we, we had our moments of being on a roller coaster. Um, I think that that really helped with our relationship because we were kind of growing together at the same time, even though at some points it seemed like it was in opposite directions. Right. Um, but I think if I had probably waited later before I found someone, it would have been much more difficult for me to okay. kind of make that commitment. Um, right. That's, you know, that's just how I, how I feel. So I see, you know, even like a lot of my girlfriends who some of them are single, they're like, oh gosh, it's like nothing out here. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that is nothing out there. Thanks. <laughs> but then like I tell them like it's harder because you know many of them are set in their ways. Right. So mm -hmm. like you've been living by yourself for 15 years, it's hard to bring somebody else into that space when we started living together so young and had to yeah. go through those growing pains and you know grow. So it's like I went from really still being like a a young girl. And there were a lot of times when I just would be like, oh, okay, yeah, you like that? I like that too. You like that? I like that too. And then one day I'm like, I don't like that. Right. And he's like, you never said you didn't like it. I'm like, I know, but this is really how I feel. And so we had to go through all of that stuff because there were things that I just felt like, okay, I need to be this way for him. And I, right. I was growing into my womanhood and started changing and his thing was like, you could have just been like yourself from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, you don't like going to barbecues, cookouts? I don't like going to the mall, so we good. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we good. You don't ask me to go to the mall, I don't ask you to go to the cookout. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. Was, like, once I said certain things, it was he was fine with it, but I think for me, just feeling like, oh, if I say I don't like this now, it's gonna be like, oh, why, why you never said you liked this before, and mm. you know, it would be a problem. Right. Um, I think also with us, you know, having the kids, that was a big thing for us, like taking care, especially for me, because he had been around kids, doing stuff yeah. for kids, but I was really worried, like. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Like I am not a mom right. <laughs> at all. So we, I mean, we did get that pressure as soon as we got married. When are you gonna have kids? And it was like, easy. let us like be with each other and have fun and have a good right. time. Right. So take, don't you. let nobody rush you. When it's your time, it is your time, girl. Mm -hmm. well, I, don't, I don't let them rush me. I'm just, I just want them to <laughs> listen to this so they can hear your story, and then they can be like. Let's leave her alone. <laughs> Everybody in their own time, and right. that's you know that's how it will happen. Right, right, right. Nah, nah, that's good. That's but that's good. that's powerful. Like you, you spoke on a lot of things in everything that you just said. Taking your time, developing yourselves first, and you know not allowing the pressure to come with age, and as right. far as rushing you into 
what you should do ultimately when it comes to your family. Like you decided together That's important. in your timing and even saying, okay, hold on PhD program. These things are big. Like those are big decisions and nobody else can make them for either one of you as a couple right. visually. So I appreciate y'all sharing a lot of those tokens because a lot of people feel rushed and they, instead of fighting against it and doing what they have to do for themselves, they do what society right. tells them, their parents tell them or whomever else. So I definitely respect that. Yeah, right. Cause at the end of the day, the argument is going to be between you two. It's not going to be between you and the world. Right. No, nobody's going to come in and say, hey, well, we told you to go ahead and have these kids, so <laughs> we're going to take them off your hands for the next couple of years so y'all can get right. <laughs> no, that's, that's, not, right. that's not how it goes. Right. So, so was it difficult to block out the noise? Because I, I see a lot of couples and they're paying attention to all the noise on the outside instead of because i always say you should make your own rules for your couple so was it difficult to to block out that noise to be able to create your own rules and your own culture for yourselves and your relationship not for me <laughs> not for me i think um honestly for me it was i come from a single um parent household so you know, it was my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather. My grandfather passed when I was um, about to leave for college. So basically I was in a house full of women after that. Mm -hmm. So from from 17 to present, well, to 2007 when I had my son, I was the only man in the house. Right. Um, so it was more so, I guess, kind of, seeing the failures in my mother's relationship mm. and that wasn't hard to do because i never saw her in a relationship but i'm the oldest of three right so she was with somebody right <laughs> at right. some point you know um so it was it was more so me learning that i don't have a guy so i'm figuring it out so mm. For me to ignore what people are saying is very easy. I, I do that anyway. I don't know. I think it's just a natural gift I have. <laughs> but um, to to block out what I don't know, like if I don't trust your judgment, it's not hard yeah. to block you out. Right. If you're not showing me success in whatever you're trying to tell me, then I don't know if your advice is one that I should follow. Right. Exactly. But. So it wasn't hard for me. It but was hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I think the other thing too is my family is nowhere near as close as her family is. Mm. And that was one of the I things that kind of drew me to her family was their closeness. Right. Um, it's, it's, it was a closeness that is annoying when you're not really from there. Um, I don't I don't visit that town often. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like going there too much anymore. But it's no, but it's it, it was something that it definitely pulled me into um, her family dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. But it did. Impact. It caused some. It caused some some. Ripples, I will say. Um, Waves. <laughs> my family is, is very close. So, and because I'm the oldest, like I said, I would like take care of my younger sisters. Mm -hmm. um, neither one of my parents went to college. So they were working all the time. And I wanted to be just like a role model to my sisters. I wanted to be as perfect a kid as possible for my parents so that they wouldn't need to worry about me. Right. And so what they thought of me and how they looked at me definitely mattered. I took what my parents said, like, you already heard me twice. I said I went to my parents for right. advice. So um, it, it was hard. You know, there were times when, um, you know, I would want to, like, go to my parents first like in our our marriage. Mm. And it would be like, you know, for him, like, I'm your husband. But you can't like 
go to your parents first. We need to talk about this. Or right. if I had already talked to them and we're having a conversation and I said, oh, well, mommy and daddy said, and he's like, well, I'm your husband. So yeah. that was something that was hard for me because, you know, I still wanted to still always to still do like make my parents proud and respect what they say. And we have a great relationship. Like they're like my best friends. Right. So it was hard because it's like, you know, my husband, you, you're supposed to be my best friend, but I'm, I'm leaving you out of some of those conversations and some of those decisions. And I'm talking to my parents about it first. Mm -hmm. so that did cause, and he is very good with blocking people out. Like, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> he has no problem. But that is that is difficult for me. I am the pleaser. Like, I want to make sure everybody's mm -hmm. good, everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. And his thing is, nah, if you're not doing nothing for me and I don't see and I feel like I can't trust you, I'm not trying to please right. you. Right. So right. we are definitely opposites in that regard. And it does show up sometimes like in our parenting. <laughs> he's he's a tough one on the kids. And I, I'm tough on them too to some extent. But then I try to come in and I'm like, all right, listen, I know you messed up, but please do better <laughs> next time. And all right, come on, let's go like out for ice cream. And he's like, no. <laughs> I'm going to be hurt. You messed up. Deal with it. Man, that was kind of hard. Yeah. Two, two different sides of the tracks. So yeah, but it's so funny. We grew up in the same city, but very differently. So I would say I was a little more spoiled where he had to like go really fend for himself yeah. a lot. I mean, you know, he had his, his mother and his grandmother, like he said, but you know, even times right now, the kids will be like, oh, it's nothing in the house to eat. And I'm like, all right, well, let's go get something. And he's like, yes, it is. And yep. he will go in there and find all kinds of scraps, <laughs> cans. But when he makes it. We don't it, have scraps. We make money. There no, you go. but sometimes <laughs> I'm like, yeah, there's nothing really in the refrigerator. There's nothing in the cabinet. You go and pull out cans that have been in the back. And you're like, no, we, we can make something. And, and we're sitting there, I'm like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> right. But I would just be like, oh, yeah, there's nothing in here. Let's go get something. Mm -hmm. I love this, but, though, because it's a balance. It is. Yes. Good, healthy balance. It is a balance. And I tell him that a lot of times. So I have to, and I don't know if he appreciates it or not, but even mm -hmm. sometimes with the kids, when they're talking to me and telling me stuff, I have to tell him later, like, um, so I think you should just like relax on them just a little bit. <laughs> and so I think he hears me sometimes. I hear, I hear <laughs> but and then I ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> we know what's no, up. It's like they, the kids, they don't know what they want. Right. <laughs> I I, I'll explain. let you know what you want when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still try to help by speaking to him later. And I think that us doing that after, you know, not in front of them and mm -hmm. just to, you know, advocate for them a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. What was the next question? <laughs> well, I was he coming is, in. He is tougher <laughs> in exterior than he looks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to like the next question. It's probably going to keep you in the same mood. I was just <laughs> that we're on you know the basis of challenges within parenting relationships and so on what is your greatest challenge and how can you like supply us with advice and how you you know deal with that challenge you've talked about you know communicating about the kids and co-parent well co-parenting parenting um but you know is there anything else one of those big big things that stand out as the greatest challenge and how what would you give as advice for others I'll let you go first. <laughs> That's because she don't. She's still trying to formulate an answer. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. I already it wasn't know. A question about work. She I got, already she know. Got set answers for all of that stuff. Oh my goodness! And you don't just know. Um, I think the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges, is. 
what all couples face um, with work and with children. And I mean, right now in this pandemic isn't helping, um, mm -hmm. is finding time for yourself as a couple, as an yeah. individual. Um, right. You know, it's like even for her birthday, her birthday was Sunday and it's like, well, what what do you want to do? Like we can't really do anything. <laughs> right. it's like so, and then the, my son had three basketball games on Sunday. Wow. The daughter had a cheer competition. Uh, um, so we were in two. Well, we probably were two and a half hours away from each other for most of the day. Mm -hmm. So you know, we did the celebration on Saturday evening, which was, let's just get some takeout from a restaurant, come home and watch a movie. Right. And get you that red velvet cheesecake from Cheesecake Factory. So, <laughs> you know, but um, it's, it's finding, finding time to make sure you're good um, as an individual and as a couple. Um, and it's crazy because now they say with the pandemic, there's been a higher rate of divorce and everything. And I just said those people really didn't like each other to start. Right. The pandemic was just a way to show it. Yeah, because right. Because you up with that person, whereas you could have ran out the door before. Mm -hmm. um, I like her sometimes, <laughs> but not enough to leave. Right. And, you know. That's real, though. That's real. Love and yeah, like it. Yes. I got friends and, and uh, I'm good. <laughs> um, everything that you just said, making time for yourself, um, but then also making time for each other. Right. And although we've been in this pandemic, and even actually like a little bit prior to the pandemic, just um some of the additional just like volunteer things that I've gotten involved in, you know, mm -hmm. it takes time. And then I'm one of those people that I really, again, being a pleaser, wanting to do a good job, even for work, I'm like going above and it's like nine o'clock and he's like, uh, can we watch a movie? Can we watch TV? And I'm just like, no, I just, I just need to finish this. I'll be a few minutes. And then next thing you know, you know, it's the next morning and he's like, what, what time did you go to bed? I'm like, right. uh, like three. So, you know, it's, it's challenging in that regard because I do, I do hear you. I do hear you. I do hear you. <laughs> I understand you have to work, but like we need to spend time together too. Um, and so that is challenging. And then with the kids, they're getting older so it's it's still running around with them, getting involved in their stuff, making sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a it's a challenge with outside family because you know you have the dynamics of your extended family and trying to get them to understand that now with the kids, like this is how we parent here. Right. Right. This is what we do. Right. You know, regardless of, you know, like my parents, how you raised us or so his mother, how, you know, he was raised like this is how we raise our kids. And you, everybody has to respect that. You right. know, like all their aunts, you know, who are like, oh, let them do it. Like, no, no. This, is, this is what we do <laughs> in our house. Right. You know, it's, it's virtual, but we still get up and we do virtual church. Mm -hmm. And I tell the kids, like, that's what we do in our house. We, I can't say what other kids do, but that's, mm -hmm. you get 18, you get out of here, you do what you want to do, but this is still how, how we do it here. So, you know, making time for ourselves, for each other, and then understanding, spending time with our kids. Right. Um, I think that this has been a good time, although they work our nerves. <laughs> but I mean, our twins are 13. And so pretty soon they not going to be bothered at all. So just the fact that we do have time to spend with them and we've been trying to kind of get out and do things that we would never have done, like paint together or, you know, do other things where we can bond more as a family. 
Right. And um, he's like, I'm ready for them to go. I'm like, yo, yeah, my babies. <laughs> Don't be going soon enough. So, you know, those type of challenges. And then we also, there are, I, I don't know if it would be considered like a true challenge, but we do have debates sometimes about, you know, being a black man and being mm -hmm. a black woman and working and who's getting it worse. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I'm getting it worse because I'm a woman and I'm black. And he's like, I'm a black man. That's it. So it's like, <laughs> we get into those conversations sometimes and I'm like, no, you don't understand. He's like, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being in, you know, not even just corporate America, but just working in the space because we are in STEM. Right. Um, you know, we, we have some of those conversations about, you know, who is getting their butt kicked worse. <laughs> and that, you know, that's challenging as well. Right. And then you want to support each other and our um, external activities. Like he, right. he does support me when I'm just like, I have this idea, I think I want to do it, but you know, I don't want to do it. And he's like, oh, you're getting on my nerves, just do, do it. it. Yeah, do <laughs> it. <laughs> so, you know, those those different things. But, um, you know, I it, it has been a roller coaster. It's still, I know will continue to be, but I do, you know, thinking I'm really thankful that, you know, we're still here, but it's not, it's not been easy. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people make it seem like, oh, you fall in love, you get married and everything yeah. is all good. But, you know, 20 years is a long time. I still can't believe it. And we have definitely had challenges. Um, but, you know, we try to work through them and, you know, come back together. And we're still growing and learning, even at this phase of being in our careers for so long, you know, still deciding what additional pivots we might make. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's, it's awesome, you, you guys, is dynamic. And just to be able to witness you two interacting and telling us your stories. I grew up single parent household, but I wasn't, when I was out of college, when I really started seeing healthy relationships, seeing couples that actually was together and liked each other. Yeah. And it's it's a it's refreshing to see it with you two, and I am definitely honored to be in you guys' presence because I'm I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to grow mm -hmm. as a, as a black man, and especially as a single black man, knowing I want to be somebody's husband one day. <laughs> right. And it's so. You want to be somebody's husband, Joe? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so I I do appreciate the real the realistic view of marriage you guys are giving as mm -hmm. well and the the way you are describing your marriage because it's like you say this is not disney channel things you don't just see somebody oh i'm we're gonna be happily ever after without the actual real work so right. um, i i thank you for that yeah i'm definitely uh i'm not gonna say i learned totally but i have done much better when you know it's like he need his space like mm -hmm. leave him alone don't be following after him if he <laughs> needs his space and leave him but i would be like but what's wrong but why you not talk to me but how come <laughs> and that is not the thing to do <laughs> right you, need space, you gotta give him his space <laughs> right well teach me yeah. now <laughs> Well, I, I tell people all the time, especially like um, younger couples, friends or whoever, family that are getting married. My my first question to them when they say, oh, I'm engaged. I'm like, oh, congratulations. Is your significant other your best friend? Mm -hmm. And if they say no, they're like, no, why are you asking me that? <laughs> I'm like, I was like, you get over stuff with your best friend faster than you do with family. Yeah. Your best friend is always going to have your back regardless of whether you're right or you're wrong. Your right. best friend is going to tell you when you're wrong. Right. You're going to listen to your best friend even when you're mad It's hell. You're going to pay attention to what they say because you value their opinion. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. You might want to rethink this if that's not your best friend. I right. say that in so many words, but it's more so go out there. You need to make that person your best friend 
or mm -hmm. as close to your best friend as possible, and then you can become best friends. But that should be the idea. Like right. you want your best friend as your spouse because yeah. it just makes life easier. It, yeah. It, it does because you can argue today and just be over it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's what best friends do, especially you got women. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah, and you have to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. That is so key and important. Uh, because when we first got <laughs> married, like finances were definitely not my strong suit. Um, he mm. was very disciplined about like saving, even when it came to the wedding. And I wanted like, I want this ice sculpture and I want, I want to release butterflies. That's and like, he's like, who's paying for that? As you should, as you should. He's like, who's paying for that? <laughs> right. so he definitely like grounded me. <laughs> and I've gotten much better because he's like, listen, these are things we have to do. We have to focus on this. And, you know, we were able to get our house because he was so dedicated, not because of me, because, you know, I would be like, well, what's wrong with us still living over here? <laughs> living over here? And he's like, right. no, save, you know, get a house. Yeah. We need to do this. And that really helped to set us up for our kids and, you know, everything else. So no one, you know what your strengths and weaknesses are are really really helpful because some people still don't know and it's like right. well if that's not the person who's strong in finances then they should not be the person handling the money right right <laughs> you know so definitely if she got a shoe yes, <laughs> I, I'm much better i see now in the past i would just buy shoes and be like bills whatever but now i take care of all my bills everything is paid and then i buy shoes she just got more money for shoes yeah. that, i bust my butt to get more money for shoes so i can pay my bills and get my shoes hey <laughs> that works well I'm I'm saying... to you, babe. <laughs> Well, I thank you both once right. again for coming on. Uh, is there any last words before I close it out? Any last words that you want to provide to any couple? Because the purpose of this is to provide a model couple to show yeah. you know, what's working, right? It doesn't have to be, nobody has to completely take your blueprint, but this could be a guidance, right? You, you do what's, what works for you, right? But there are a lot of things that are not working for people that's out mm. there stream nowadays so joe and i decided to put out there what does actually work and you know spread some black love for valentine's day some real black love real black <laughs> love no stunting for the media you know we made it because we're rappers which is funny right. that this is valentine's day because um i will say like on our first date <laughs> my husband said to me um i just want you to know like i don't do valentine's day and I was like, inside, I was like, <laughs> oh, but outside, I was like, oh, okay. Um, yeah. but, but however, he, it, he did everything every other day. So it was like mm. the more that, you know, we were around each other, the more that like, that wasn't a big deal. And mm -hmm. when prior to that, I was like, oh my gosh, Valentine's Day, you know, but then it was just like, yeah, it's, I mean, he does stuff every day, so I don't really need to, like, focus on this, and then the attention came to the kids, which was funny, when they were born, he started getting more into it, and I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> you know, they got candy and everything else, but, um, yeah, but I will say, I think that, you know, you, when you're in a relationship, you should really like know yourself okay. and know yourself with this person Absolutely. and to be, to be honest, you know, because it, it, it definitely, you know, being on that roller coaster, I was not always honest about who I was when I was with him versus uh, who I was when I wasn't with him. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, dealing with that and then growing into my womanhood and now I'm like, wait, I could do that too. And he's right. like, wait, wait, where, where you come from? And, <laughs> right. you know, he's like, oh, so now you're speaking up and you got a voice. And so, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm growing. So I think, you know, being honest with yourself and then leaning on each other. Because when you're together, you have to rely on each other, like you said, to be best friends. Right.
Right. Now that, but that's great advice. It's, and there's once again, great realistic advice that people can use. Um, there's not no love and hip hop stuff or whatever. Right. Cause like I said, think about it through the, through the movies, the TV shows and the songs, unhealthy relationships have been romanticized. Like this right. is what you're supposed, right. to, do. And you're supposed right. to get ran over by life before what? you find love. And, this and, love, you know. and even beyond that, the more toxic it is, the better it is. The crazier right. she is or the crazier nah, is, the more in love like y'all are. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's why, that's why I'm good. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, well, they, once again, thank you both for being right. here today and kickstarting our Black Love series. Yeah. We appreciate all Thanks the tokens. Right. This is how you start a series. This is how you yes. start yeah, this, is, this is actually fun and for us to yeah. talk and go back down memory lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate you both being transparent. You gave yes. us the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Like, And then you gave us tokens to take with us. Yes. So if we already in a relationship or whatever else, that is very beneficial to everybody. So thank you again for being right. here. And thank you for all of you who are tuning in. Joe, you want to say some last words? Yes. Make sure you all share this, like, comment, subscribe, share this. Make sure everybody you know sees this. We want to be able to promote the series, but also promote the Laurie's and the, the, the love that they bring through their relationship so make sure as many people see this and y'all make sure you all go out and love yourselves and love your First. partner the way you're supposed to love them so yes thank Joe. you that's how you bring this it. it's very very needed so thank you yes. for your vision and bringing this to everyone right thank you right. thank you right. so i'm gonna just say to end this off this is the tay and the joe show yes see you see next time right. see y'all later <laughs> bye